Animal Liberation, A New Ethics for Our Treatment of Animals is a 1975 book by Australian philosopher Peter Singer. It is widely considered within the animal liberation movement to be the founding philosophical statement of its ideas. Singer himself rejected the use of the theoretical framework of rights when it comes to human and non-human animals. Following Jeremy Bentham, Singer argued that the interests of animals should be considered because of their ability to experience suffering and that the idea of rights was not necessary in order to consider them. He popularized the term, speciesism, in the book, which had been coined by Richard D. Ryder to describe the exploitative treatment of animals. Summary Singer's central argument is an expansion of the utilitarian idea that the greatest good is the only measure of good or ethical behavior. He argues that there is no reason not to apply this principle to other animals. Although Singer rejects rights as a moral concept independent from his utilitarianism based on interests, he accepts rights as derived from utilitarian principles, particularly the principle of minimizing suffering. Singer allows that animal rights are not the same as human rights, writing in Animal Liberation that there are obviously important differences between humans and other animals, and these differences must give rise to some differences in the rights that each have. In Animal Liberation, Singer argues against what he calls speciesism, discrimination on the grounds that a being belongs to a certain species. He holds the interests of all beings capable of suffering to be worthy of equal consideration and that giving lesser consideration to beings based on their species is no more justified than discrimination based on skin color. He argues that animals' rights should be based on their capacity to feel pain more than on their intelligence. In particular, he argues that while animals show lower intelligence than the average human, many severely intellectually challenged humans show equally diminished, if not lower, mental capacity and that some animals have displayed signs of intelligence for example, primates learning elements of American Sign Language and other symbolic languages, sometimes on a par with that of human children. Therefore, intelligence does not provide a basis for giving non-human animals any less consideration than such intellectually challenged humans. Singer concludes that the most practical solution is to adopt a vegetarian or vegan diet. He also condemns vivisection except where the benefit, in terms of improved medical treatment, etc., outweighs the harm done to the animals used. Reception Animal Liberation is one of the most widely read books by a moral philosopher. Activist Ingrid Newkirk wrote of Animal Liberation. It forever changed the conversation about our treatment of animals. It made people, myself included, change what we ate, what we wore, and how we perceived animals. Other activists who claim that their attitudes to animals changed after reading the book include Peter Tatchell and Matt Ball. Singer has expressed regret that the book did not have more impact. In September 1999, he was quoted by Michael Spector in The New Yorker on the book's impact. It's had effects around the margins, of course, but they have mostly been minor. When I wrote it, I really thought the book would change the world. I know it sounds a little grand now, but at the time the 60s still existed for us. It looked as if real changes were possible, and I let myself believe that this would be one of them. All you have to do is walk around the corner to McDonald's to see how successful I have been. The book has also received a wide range of philosophical challenges to his formulation of animal rights. In a lengthy debate in Slate magazine, Richard Posner wrote that Singer failed to see the radicalism of the ethical vision that powers his view on animals, an ethical vision that finds greater value in a healthy pig than in a profoundly intellectually challenged child, that commands inflicting a lesser pain on a human being to avert a greater pain to a dog, and that provided only that a chimpanzee has 1% of the mental ability of a normal human being, would require the sacrifice of the human being to save 101 chimpanzees. Singer replied to and rejected this claim. In addition, Martha Nussbaum has argued that the capability approach provides a more adequate foundation of justice than utilitarianism can supply. Utilitarianism, Nussbaum argues, ignores adaptive preferences, elides the separateness of distinct persons, misidentifies valuable human, non-human emotions such as grief, and calculates according to 
some rankings, rather than inviolable protection of intrinsic entitlements. Singer replied to this critique. Editions There have been several editions of the book published over the years, each further chronicling the progress of the animal liberation movement. Personal background In an essay entitled, Animal Liberation, A Personal View, Singer describes the personal background that led to his adoption of the views he sets out in Animal Liberation. He writes of how he arrived in Oxford in October 1969, and in 1970 had lunch with a fellow graduate student, Richard Keshin, who avoided meat. This led Singer to inquire as to why. Singer then read Ruth Harrison's book, Animal Machines, as well as a paper by Rosalind Godlovich, who would later co-edit Animals, Men and Morals, which convinced him to become a vegetarian and to take animal suffering seriously as a philosophical issue. See also Tom Regan References, <references>